Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is a video about my experiences over the first couple of weeks with a Go XLR. So in the video, I'm going to show you the Go XLR Mini, but all of the things that I show you apply equally to the Go XLR uh, full size version, just with the addition of the um, sampler pads and sound effects for uh, voices. Um, so I'm going to start with just an overview of what I'm going to show in the diagrams. Um, so whenever you see this diagram here, uh, this icon here, sorry, that's going to refer to the sliders on the physical unit. Um, these are the mute buttons. This is what I'm going to call the, the bleep bu button, the one that makes a one kilohertz tone over a swear word or a naughty phrase. Um, and then the temporary mute button, which some people call the cough button because you can press it temporarily if you just need to cough or, or say something briefly. And then onto the back, we've got the XLR inputs for the microphone. We've got the line in from another line source, or maybe even from another Go XLR if you've got a dual computer setup. Uh, the line out, which will probably go to a pair of speakers um, or studio monitors. Uh, the USB connection itself. The optical input, which is uh, generally marked as uh, optical or game, though you can plug anything into it that's got an optical signal. Uh, and then on the front, certainly on the mini, is a 3.5 millimeter mic in. Um, you can only use one of them, it's XLR or mic. Um, and then a headphone socket, which again on the on the Go XLR Mini is on the front of the unit. So um, that's um, the layout of the components and what, what the different symbols you see or uh, images mean. Um, we're gonna work through this uh, and I've mapped out a diagram of the flow of all the inputs and outputs and stuff in between. We're gonna tackle this a step at a time. So this is what the finished version looks like. Uh, but we're going to start here with the hardware inputs. So these are the physical connections on the Go XLR that we can use for a hardware input. Um, the first, and probably the reason why you bought this, is the XLR microphone input or the 3.5 millimeter microphone input. So you can only use one of these at once, um, although it does have the two connections. If at all possible, I would recommend using the XLR if your equipment supports it. And the next thing that we've got then is the optical input, uh, normally shown with a game console or a game description, but it can be used for anything with an optical connection. We've then got the line in, which is one of the 3.5 millimeter jacks on the device. And then if you have a Go XLR full size, you've probably got the ability to do sampling and, um, and you can enter samples from the hardware buttons on the front. Um, you actually can do it from software as well, but for the purposes of hardware inputs, this is what we've got microphone XLR, microphone 3.5 millimeter, optical line in and sample. And the next level of inputs are software inputs. So these are ones that you can um, connect to a software application. So what we're talking about here basically is a, where we send the sound out of an application and into the Go XLR. So a little bit of terminology we need to get around our head. Although these are inputs on the Go XLR, they are an output from an application. So this is where my confusion started originally when I very first started using this, I got the terminology of outputs and inputs, and it depends whether you're looking from the perspective of the Go XLR or the application itself. But we can assign any software application or groups of applications to these individual channels. And we'll talk about that um, in a couple of steps. And the next thing we've got then is the control over the microphone. So we have a button where we can uh, bleep, um, or censor a swear word. Uh, we've got a button for temporary mute or cough, as some people call it. And then we've got a, so a set of software microphone effects, which we do through the application. But these are all things that feed through the microphone signal or channel before we do other things with it. So this is how we get inputs into the system, a combination of hardware inputs and a combination of software inputs. Once we've got our inputs, we're then able to adjust the volume of these inputs using the hardware sliders on the top surface of the Go XLR. So we've only got four sliders, so you can't mix or adjust the volume of more than four things at once, but you can pick any of the four things in the green boxes. So those four sliders can be any, uh, can manage any kind of volume, whether that be mic, chat, music, game, console, line-in system, or sample. The caveat is that you've only got four of them. So um, you can assign them to anything, but there's only four. So that's the that's where the bulk of the volume and mixing is going to be done. Um, because we've got more inputs than sliders, 
it is also possible to do it with the software application. So what you'll probably find is that you'll pick your four favorite um, channels and use the hardware sliders and you'll just anything else through the application or maybe you'll adjust it and leave it alone for the duration of recording or streaming. So the same set of inputs, but there are an additional set of parameters you get in the application that you don't get with physical buttons on the device. Um, the first of those is being the actual volume of the bleep. So you can adjust how loud the beeping sound is when somebody presses the bleep button. Um, we can also adjust the headphone volume through that out headphone output. And we can also adjust the volume of the microphone when it's coming out of that headphone output. We'll talk more about those later. So the next thing we do once we've got inputs, um, we've done any microphone effects. We've adjusted the volume through the sliders and we've adjusted the volume through the application. We then come to the routing section where we decide which of those channels come out of which outputs at the other end, whether they be software outputs or hardware outputs. Um, what I will say is these names here do represent the actual name you'll see in the application. And you'll see that for some things like optical, um, you can't change that, that it's the optical input always maps to a, a channel called console. You'll see that um, certain things like sample or microphone are the same again. So these are the names that you'll see in the application. And um, from the routing section, we pick which channels um, are presented or come out of which outputs. So this is a grid that you click with on your mouse in the application to decide which uh, channels come out of which outputs. The first set of outputs we've got are software ones. So if you want, you can just send the microphone out to an application. So that might be something like um, Discord, or it might be your streaming software, or it could be a, a video conferencing application. But this special channel called Chat Mic just contains the audio from the microphone uh, channel. The next thing we've got is called Broadcast Stream Mix. And that's a mix of all the channels um, and all the levels uh, that you've decided to output. So this is what you would send to your recording software or to your streaming software as the final mix or the output that you want to send um, to recording or to uh, listeners. We've also got an ability to send a sample um, as well. So you can record samples um, through the buttons on the front and then speaking to them, but you can also send an input to the sampler so you can have a sound come out of the XLR that then gets recorded on the sampler. I'm not sure how often people will use that, but it technically is another channel which is bonded to the sample um, application. So we've got an ability to send the microphone out. We've got uh, to a piece of software. We've got the ability to send the finished broadcast stream mix out to a piece of software. And we've got the ability to send the sample channel out to a piece of software. We've also then got um, physical outputs. So we've got hardware outputs for things like line out. So you'll most probably connect this to a pair of speakers or studio monitors. And this is how you'll listen to it um, sat at your desk or sat at your workstation. And then there's also a separate um, output for the microphone. Um, and this is sorry for the headphones. And this is where you adjust or connect headphones to the Go XLR. And you'll notice that those things we talked about before, those parameters you can change in the application, you can adjust the headphone volume from the application and you can adjust the volume or level of the microphone when listening to it through the headphones. So that's an overview of all the channels. So we've got hardware inputs, software inputs, uh, ways of manipulating um, uh, the microphone or creating effects on the microphone, an ability to change channel levels via the sliders on, and the mute buttons on the front, an ability to change the levels using the um, channels on the application, uh, itself with some extra ones here relating to the bleep volume, the headphone volume and the microphone um, headphone volume. We've then got the routing where we decide which inputs go to which outputs. We've then got a method of sending just the microphone to an application like Discord or maybe Zoom or a, another video conferencing application. We've got the full mixed output to another application. This may be Discord or um, Streamlabs or, you know, kind of anything like that or, or you know, Twitch, maybe something like that. And then we've got the ability to send an output from the sampler. And then finally, two physical um, or hardware outputs, one designed for speakers or monitors and one designed for headphones. So that's what I regard as being the missing diagram, uh, the stuff that I had to work out by hand after a couple of weeks of using the Go XLR. 
So the next thing I want to move on to is how we actually get these software inputs and outputs to work with an application, uh, because I find I was left to myself to figure this out. And what we're basically saying is we need a way to make sure that a Windows application or a Mac application can be sent to an input on the device. And we need a way for an output from a device to be sent to an application as well. So I'll, I'll just explain how we do that. So certainly for Windows, if you go to your sound settings, there is an option at the bottom that will allow you to pick advanced sound options. And when you go to that um, screen there, you'll notice that there's two options for each application that you're currently running. And you do have to be running them. You, you can't pick these uh, unless the application's running. The top box is for an output and the bottom box is for an input. So if you want to send the music from Winamp into the music channel, of the go xlr you need to click on this box and pick the go xlr as the output for the music which will become the input on the go xlr and we can do similar things for uh, inputs so i'll give you a better example of that so if we want to send the music from winamp into the music channel of the go xlr we need to look at it from the application point of view the sound is an output from the application that becomes an input on the Go XLR. So in our Windows control panel, we set Winamp to have an output on the Go XLR music channel. And that's how we get the sound from Winamp to go through the amplifier, through the mixer channel, and come out of the broadcast screen, the stream, or the line out or the headphones. Now it may be that we want to not just get sound from an application into the Go XLR, we might want to send sound from the Go XLR into an application. So the example I've picked here is uh, Audacity, but it could be any application that can accept an input as if it was a, a sound input or a microphone input. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to use the stream mix from the Go XLR as an input to the audio software. So Audacity is not the best example because you can actually pick which input you want, but I'm just giving it as an example of an application which is able to use sound and input it or record it. Um, so in this case, you would have your normal mix, you'd have all your channels, you'd have your routing, and then what we would do is we would tell Windows that the output, the software output from the broadcast stream mix, needs to be used as an input to Audacity. Um, or any other application that we want to send sound to. So this is how you get software inputs and outputs. Um, and this again was something I was kind of left to figure out myself and I, I kind of wish there was more help on this. Um, very last thing here is, um, when I first started using this, I had more than one sound card and more than one interface. So to begin with, I had a Go XLR, I had a, a Scarlett 2i2 and an Elgato Wave, and I could only have one default output device. And that wasn't always going to be the Go XLR. So I found myself constantly changing my output device in Windows because I generally use my Scarlett 2i2 as the output device, not the Go XLR. Now there is a way around that. And what you can do is you can go into your sound control panel and pick your broadcast stream mix. And if you click on that and select properties, you can tick the box that says listen to this device and listen to it through whichever other device is your def default output. So I'm saying take the mixed audio signal and I want you to play it out through the speakers on my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. So this is a way of making sure that if you've got more than one audio interface or more than one sound card, if the Go XLR isn't your default output device, you can still hear the sound from it. So this might be useful for somebody who's got more than one device and doesn't want to keep flicking it backwards and forwards. Um, very last tip here, again, because I had multiple audio devices, I had the Scarlett 2i2, the Go XLR, and an Elgato Wave 3. I had so many input devices, I found it difficult to identify them. But what you can do, again, from that property screen, is you can change the icon and you can change the name if you wanted to do to make it easier for yourself. So that's the end. Uh, this is basically all the stuff I figured out in the first couple of weeks of having a Go XLR. And this is the diagram that I wish I'd been able to see first because I found it very hard work to begin with. So I'll leave it on that screen just for a second, just in case anybody wants to pause the screen and have another look at it. But um, thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.